Hello and welcome to the Powerful Personal Brand Podcast, where I and my guests share tips to help inspire you to build a great personal brand to increase your visibility and authority. Uh, I am your host, Claire Bon, and on today's episode, I am joined by Kathleen Melvin. Kathleen is a messaging expert whose insight has been featured via TEDx, Thrive Global, Fempreneur Online, Captivate and Convert, She Built This, and other outlets. With a degree in theater performance and an over a decade as an actor, director, writer, editor, and educator, Kathleen draws on her diverse experiences to help mission-driven entrepreneurs, uh, experts, sorry, design and deliver their world-changing messages through TEDx coaching, done-for-you copywriting services. Let's talk about, let's talk about thought leadership though, right? Because that, yeah. that's like really another one of your fortes along with copywriting. So let's talk about thought leadership and why it's important for business leaders to be, you know, thought leaders. We all as business leaders need to have people respect our ideas. There's this idea mm -hmm. of no like and trust. And I think that the like portion, we can argue about whether people need to like you or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are lots of business owners who are personal brands who are unlikable, but people buy their stuff. And I right. think that it's more about being respected having your ideas respected than necessarily being liked yeah. and having and trusted, your right. If yes. You have to trust that they know mm -hmm. what they're talking about. Yeah. Right. And I think that those two things really go hand in hand. I think that it's, it's hard to trust someone you don't respect and it's hard mm -hmm. to respect someone you don't trust. Right. Trust. Yeah. And as business leaders, when we put our ideas out into the world for other people to hear other people to read, that gives our audiences or our prospective audiences the opportunity to learn how to know us, how to mm -hmm. respect us, how to trust us. If we're not putting our ideas out in the world really openly so that people have accessibility to that, there's no way for them to get to the point where they know, like, and trust us so that they'll buy our services or our programs mm -hmm. or our products or whatever it is that we're right. trying to market. Or you'll be asked to be a speaker or mm -hmm. any of that sort of stuff. So I personally, some, you know, with, with, with clients, I, I come up to this kind of like, uh, wall sometimes where they're resistant to sharing information because what, what if someone doesn't like this? What if they see mm -hmm. me like this? What if, what if, what if, yeah. and obviously you deal with some of some, they're past experiences that are kind of rearing their ugly head, but how do you, how have you dealt with people like that going like, okay, no, you're not, you need to do this to get to where you want to be. How do you overcome that? I think the first thing is acknowledging that that is a very human experience. We are social creatures and we are wired to want to be accepted mm -hmm. by the other creatures who are like us. And so we learn as we grow up, oh, if I'm a boy and I say I like Barbies, that's going to get me in trouble. Or if I'm too old for Cocoa Melon, but I say I still like Cocoa Melon, that's going to get me in trouble. And so we learn really young that there are these, these barriers where if we are our authentic selves, people are not going to like us. And mm -hmm. then I think that when we grow up and we become entrepreneurs, that can be a really scary thing because when people have negative reactions to us, that impacts our revenue. Mm. But I think that the really important thing to remember when we come up against that wall, where we're like, this is really scary and I'm afraid that people won't like what I'm going to say is that not everybody has to like what you're going to say. Not everybody has to agree with what you're going to say. First of all, just because they don't agree with it doesn't mean they're not going to buy your program. It's that thing that, that I talked about earlier, where there, there are definitely people who are not well liked. Yeah. <laughs> but who still sell. In a nice way. Tons, <laughs> right. Yeah. They, they may, they, their revenue is doing okay. Right. But even beyond that, when we come up against those moments, I think it's important to remember 
that not everybody has to like us, that our mm -hmm. people are our people and our people are going to be attracted to what we're saying, whether it's, oh, I agree with that, or it's, oh, I've never thought about it that way, or anything that, that makes them go, oh, this person is worth listening to. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going for when we put our ideas out online. Yeah. And there are always going to be people who quietly or otherwise are going to disagree with you or who are going to think you're foolish for thinking the things that you think. And ultimately we have to remember that we're putting those ideas out to help narrow down the vastness of the human population. We're helping narrow down so that the people who are really our people, who are the best clients for us, the best customers for us, can find us through that, through those ideas that we're publishing. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I do say that too, that yeah, you, you're like magnetize the right people yeah. and kind of repel the wrong ones. Um, yeah. It is yeah. just as important to repel the wrong people as it Agreed. is to bring in the right people. It's like mm -hmm. when you, when people unsubscribe from an email list, it can feel yeah. like, oh, they don't like me. They don't like yeah. my content. I'm not worth the space in their inbox. But ultimately, right. it's thank you for cleaning yourself out. You don't need to be here. I don't mm -hmm. need to have you here. You're going to go be better somewhere else. And you're making room for the for my people. Yeah, I like that.